Okay guys, so in this video we're going to learn about the math object. So let's first of all take everything that we created in our app JS. So the last section of converting types. So we had it, I think, yeah, this is it. And as I said, let's cut it out and copy it into the converting types. Okay, so this is separated from the other and now create another one. Uh, I almost created a partial like it says, oh my God. Okay, so number five will be the math object. Math, the math object dot js. And as I said, we're going to write our code in the app js and then paste it into the math js. Okay, so JavaScript math object allows you to perform mathematical tasks on numbers. So let's start by creating a comment, the math object. Okay, underneath of this, I'm just going to create two variables, but using const this time. So const, uh, let's call the first one number one and assign it a value of 100. And let's create another const and let's call this one num2 and assign it a value of let's say 50. Okay, I'm just going to initialize now a, another variable with let and call it calc. So for cal calculation, calc, okay, close it up. And now let's talk about basic, I actually want to tap it into a comment, so basic math operators and calculations. Did I type in here something wrong? Calculations. I'm missing an L. Okay, I'm actually going to close this up. So the first one will be sum. I'm actually going to type in all of them. So multiplication then. Then we will have subtraction. And division and module operator. So module modules operators. Okay, so let's start with sum. Now we have our variable of calc. So let's take this variable and let's say that number one. So num1 plus num2 and let's close it up and now let's console log our calc. Okay, so as expected 100 plus 50 equals 150. Now let's take a look at the multiplications. I'm just going to copy this paste it in here and going to replace the plus with a multiplication sign. And now it, as expected, 100 times 50 is 5000. Okay, now let's take a look at subtraction. So I'm going to copy this again and type in here minus sign. So 100 minus 50 is as expected 50. Now let's take a look at a division. 100 divided by 50 equals 2. And now we're going to use a module operator. So this. And this is actually giving us the rest. So let me explain it a little bit. So if I would replace this with 55, let's see what happens. So the rest is actually 100 divided by 55. So 55 goes into 100 one time exactly and the rest will be 54. For example, if I would take 90, the rest should be 10. Okay, so it goes into 100 one time. If I would decrease it to, let's say, uh, 5, let's see what happens. Actually, we have no rest of so 5.5. Okay, it's exactly one. 
and now let's try a 2.5 0 because it's also going to it exactly uh, 2.3 let's try 3.3 so this would be the rest the rest would be 1.1 blah 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 76 okay now let's type in here another comment of the math object And now we're going to talk exactly about the math object. So, uh, as I said, the JavaScript math object allows us to perform mathematical tasks on numbers. So, if I would take that variable of calc, keep typing it calc incorrectly, and this is the way we do math up. Uh, use the math object. So we just type in here math, and you can see it is an object. And for example, if I would use pi, you do know what pi is. Uh, let's console log it. This should be uh, 13 or 3. Point, let's just console log pi. This is actually the number of uh, pi, which is 3.1415. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so it's automatically in JavaScript. Now let's type in here another comment. We'll take a look now at math round, which will return a value of a specific value that we that we insert and round it to its nearest integer. So let's type in here math dot round. Okay, and this will take in a value. So let's just call it x. So now if we take our variable of calc and assign it math dot round, you see it's an operator of it. And if I would type in here 4.4, .4, for example, and now let's console log calc again, we'd get 4. If I would increase the 4.4 .4 to 4.46, what do you think will happen? Now it gives us 5 because it's nearer to 5. 4.6 is nearer to 5 than 4.4. .4. 4.4 is actually near to, I can also use 4.5 and it will still give me 5, but I, as soon as I go underneath 0.5, it will give me 4. Now let's take a look at math.seal. And this will return a value rounded up to its nearest integer. So if I would take this again, and replace it with seal. You see, it gives us now 5. And even if I go to 4.1, it will still remain at 5. Okay, so it runs it up to its nearest integer, which would be 5. Now, if I would use math.floor, This will return a value of x rounded down to its nearest integer. So even if I would use 4.9 and type in here floor, it will still give me 4. Okay? So 4.1 gives me 4, and also 4.9 rounds it up, rounds it down actually to its nearest integer, which is 4. So now let's take a look at math.square root. So math dot sqrt and this will also take in a value and this will return the square root of x so if I would call a variable and go math dot sqr of let's say 6 and now let's console.calc again it would be 2.4494 and so far and so on. If I would go to two, the square root of two is actually 1.41. Now if you want to return a power, we will use math.pow. So let's just type in here pow, and let's go with something easy like two. Now you can see it pounds with not a number. 
Math.pow expects two comma separated values. So the first one will be what and then to what power. So 2 at the power of 3 is 8. If I would change it to 2, it will be 4. If I would change it to 5, then we get 32. Now let's take a look at math.apps. So math.apps, which will return a absolute positive value of x. So if I would go in here and replace it with apps, and even if I so let's take 4, obviously it's positive. If I would type in a negative number, it will still return a positive number. We can also use min max. So let's type in here comment math dot min and math dot max. Okay, and, and this can be used to find the lowest and the highest value in a list of arguments. So let's first of all take a look at min and let's type in here math.min and let's type in here a few numbers. So let's go with 0, 100 and they're always comma separated. So 0, 160, 20, minus 10 and minus 2. No. It prompts up with minus 10. And why is that? It's because minus 10 is the lowest number out of these five numbers. So 0, 160 is obviously greater than 0, 20 is greater than 0, but underneath of 0 then comes minus 2 and then comes minus 10. So the, the smallest number out of this is minus 10. Now let's take a look at max. I'm just going to copy this and replace it with max. And what I just did, let me go back, is if you select one in Visual Studio Code, all of the similar code will be highlighted. If you press Control D, then it will be selected downwards, and we select the next one. And if you keep doing this, then it will go up to the code, completely up here, and go through it again until it reaches Again, this one and this one. Okay, so I just selected both of them and then I replaced them. This is a really neat trick. Okay, so which one is the maximum now? It's 160, obviously. Now we also have math.random. So let me just type in a comment math.random. And this will turn a random number between 0 inclusive and 1 exclusive. So let's type in here calc. It takes the variable of calc and assign it the math dot dot random and let's see what we get if we console log now calc. Okay, so we got now zero point seventeen. If I hit save again, so control save, you will see I will get a different number. So this will just give us a different random number. So let's say we want to limit this to 15. So we could do calc and assign it math.random and now multiply it with 15, close it up. And now let's console log our calc again. So if I keep hit refreshing it, it will not go over 15. Okay, want to limit this, let me just copy this, between 1 and 15, then I would leave this at 15 and plus 1. Now let's try this out. So this will not go underneath 0 as you can see. And let's say, for example, we want to round it up and get rid of the decimals, then we can then we can wrap the entire thing into a math.floor. So let me take this again, copy it, go down here, and we have math, and then and then I would just take this math, this entire argument, and wrap it into two parentheses. 
and then before this I'm going to use nav dot floor okay so now if we hit refresh again I got rid of all of the decimals and as you can see I'm getting a number between 1 and 15 let me actually go underneath of this to 5 okay so this is more obvious now I'm getting a random number between 1 and 5 Okay, so that's pretty much it for the map object. So see you in the next one. Bye-bye.